What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing a recap of the golf cart build, as well as putting the final touches on it that I just didn't have time to do in the last build video. I'm also gonna take this time to go over a couple little modifications I'm gonna to have to make because of the lift kit that we put on it, and I just didn't realize that stuff while doing research online. So without any further ado, let's get into it. All right, so back to it, the 2001 Club Car DS. It's all complete for the time being anyways. There's a couple little things I want to add. We talked about doing the mud guards. I just didn't have the time or the hardware to do it last, the last time we were working on the build. So we're going to go ahead and knock that out today. So there's a couple little side effects of lifting up a cart six inches and putting heavy duty leaf springs on that I just didn't see any information on or had anybody talk about their personal experience online about. And I've, we noticed that after the build was done, otherwise I would have captured it. But if you look right here, you can see that little banjo string line right there. Well, that's my fuel line. That's one of the fuel lines anyways. I believe this is a vacuum for the fuel line and it's, it's pretty taut. And that's a result of the engine dropping down essentially six plus inches. And the slack that I had in that line just virtually disappeared. So I have some new fuel line. I'm gonna go ahead and replace that. That's an easy fix. The second side effect is the same concept with my brake line. This brake line is pretty banjo string, as well as this brake line here. But fortunately, there's only a small little metal clip that holds these brake lines in place. So we can go ahead and replace that clip, get a little bit more slack into these brake lines so they're not digging into the brake line so hard. The third and final issue, which is probably the biggest issue that I have that went unnoticed or I didn't know about, was actually right here on the engine mount itself. If you can't really see this too good, but there's actually contact right here from this bracket to the, to the aluminum frame of the cart itself. Now it has a bushing right here called a snubber. And what that does is basically is a shock absorber from the front side of the engine to the frame itself. Now this is not like a typical engine where it's mounted on engine mounts and you have a drive line to a rear differential to your axles. The engine actually sits and is mounted to the rear axles if you want to call them axles and the front of this just pivots on this snubber in this little bracket my solution i hope that works out is if you notice that this bracket itself is an l shape and it's facing down my hope is to basically remove this bracket flip it over so that there's more clearance going into the snubber and will thus prevent any rubbing down here on the aluminum to aluminum Moving over to this other side, the last thing I need to address, and this is nothing as a result of the build, but actually in my fuel tank itself, if I crack this open, you may be able to see in the underside of these fuel caps, there's typically a rubber gasket that would mount right here. And this is like a movable plate that helps seal around, around the cap itself. Unfortunately, that cap has deteriorated is now sitting in the bottom of the tank. So I need to get that removed. Um, we'll probably pump the fuel out. It's very low right now. I've been kind of intentionally running the cart without refueling it just for that. So I'm, I got a little grabber. I'm gonna reach in there, get the bigger pieces out, go ahead and get a replacement fuel cap so this can be resealed. And the last thing we're gonna accomplish is go ahead and put those mud guards on. I got all the hardware and everything for the mud guards to install. So without any further ado, let's get into it. All right, went ahead and got this fuel line replaced, so there's plenty of slack in it now. The next thing I wanna do is go ahead and hit this brake line. Let's try to get a little bit more slack in that, so I need to go ahead and see if I can adjust this, this 
clip right here and see if I can get a little bit more play in it. That way my brake lines, it's not digging into my brake line right here. All right guys, so we went ahead, we got the fuel line fixed, we got the brake line fixed. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and try to jack up this engine a little bit, take some weight off so I can pull that snubber bracket off and flip it around and get it so we're not rubbing on the frame anymore. So let's get into it. I was able to get that bracket flipped over. It was kind of an easy switch, but there is no more contact. There is actually the bushing itself on the bottom is creating about a quarter inch gap. But there's still a lot of weight sitting down on that bushing. There's, there's really nothing going on on the top of the snubber and that concerns me a little bit. It's almost as if the snubber itself should be flipped over with the point facing down because I think with it being in a normal situation, there was more there was more upright pressure than there was down pressure. And now it's the opposite since the engine weight is literally hanging on this bushing at all times, um, that this thing almost needs to be flipped around. So it has more cushion there to, you know, act as a shock absorber for the engine. So I'm gonna look into that a little bit more. It was an easy fix. So if I do gotta change it, I'll, I'll just go ahead and do that. All right guys, so I got the fuel lines adjusted, the brake lines adjusted, and the engine mount adjusted. So the last thing to do is to put those stinking mud guards on there that I've been waiting to get done. So let me get all this stuff together and we'll get right on it. All right, guys, so we got the mud guards installed. We got all the uh, internal engine work that I wanted to modify done. And I got to say, this thing's looking awesome. I will say this, the mud guards itself are not the highest quality mud guards. Unfortunately, there is little areas of gaps and uh, just where the mold is not like perfectly aligned to it. And you only have so much flexibility in it, but you have to be real up close and personal to see those things. So when you stand back here, it looks awesome. But when you get up close, you can see a little bit of imperfection. It's nothing too major. I just wish that there was a little bit better, a better method. And I'm sure if you were paying top dollar for it, you would get a better product. But, you know, these are Amazon. They were cheap, you know, and you get what you pay for kind of deal. There's a lot of contours on this golf cart that it's hard to match up anything to it. So just like the headlights and the mud guards, um, you have to really, really focus on matching the body panels. So... All in all, I think it turned out great. I think it was a great project. So I'm happy with the results. All right, guys, that's a wrap for this video. And for this project, I'm calling it done. I'm really happy with the results. I hope you guys liked it too. If you did, tell me about it. Hit that like and subscribe button. Drop me a comment. Tell me what you're thinking. Otherwise, stay tuned to the channel. I got some more projects coming out. I got some more medium voltage splicing stuff coming out. Let me know what you think. Appreciate you watching. See you on the next video.